may be seated if you would turn your Bibles to Psalms chapter 91. My subject tonight, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. The Lord is there. This has been a very exciting study on the eight compound redemptive names of God. You should have a handout sheet. If you don't have one, we've got plenty of copies. If you left yours at home, please hold your hand up. Brother Elam Johnson will come and get you uh, one of those into your hands. But all of these compound redemptive names, they are fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ and his work at the cross. Tonight, we're going to conclude this study with the compound redemptive name, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. It's important that we know the names of God, and you better believe it. I have put these in an order as they're given in the Bible. You can go back and study them, read about them on your own, but they're very exciting, and I'm going to show you why they're so exciting. Look at Psalms 91, 14. God said, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high. Why? Because he has known my name. It's important that you know the names of God. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. See, the more you know about the names of God, the more you know God. The more you understand his character and the characteristics of God, the more your faith grows where you can expect him to meet that particular need in your life. But the word Jehovah means the God who reveals himself. That word is used over 6,800 times in the Old Testament. And God revealed himself to his people, line upon line, precept upon precept, a little here and a little there. And in the past, I've done these names. And uh, at the conclusion, if you'll see that I've been on a quest to know him for a long, long time. And, uh, but the Lord spoke to me and says, I reveal myself line upon line, precept upon precept, a little here and a little there. So put them in order, the order that I reveal myself in. And so that's what we've done. But what God was doing, God was revealing himself whenever a particular need came up. God would reveal himself to his covenant people as the God who met that need. And we have taken these old, uh, eight Old Testament redemptive names. And we've studied them in biblical order and the order in which they were given. And we have looked at them. So if you look at that chart on the board up there, that was all of the eight compound redemptive names. Number one, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. God revealed himself to Abraham at Mount Moriah that I will provide. Now, Abraham was the father of faith. So God was getting it out that for all the people that are the seed of Abraham. And the Bible says, if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and as according to the promise. Then everything that belonged to Abraham belongs to you. So you're in covenant. The thing about this, everything that belongs to you belongs to God. And so once you get that relationship straight, then you're on your way to total victory as a Christian. So... Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Jehovah Rapha, our healer. It was at the waters of Myra. The waters were bitter. And the first thing that God ever healed was bitterness. He said, you see that tree over there? Moses, the, the, the water was bitter. And they said, why did you bring us out here? We have no water to drink. God says, take that tree. And that tree represented the cross. So I want to show you how all of this points to Calvary says, throw it in the water. And he did, and the water became sweet. Think about it. That tree, God put it there. No insect could eat it and kill it. No one could cut it down for firewood. No one could build a house with it. No one could do anything because God had it there for a specific purpose. And he says, I'm going to heal those waters. And life has so many things. God says, I'm going to be your Jehovah Rapha. And in Exodus 15, 26, right after they came to those bitter waters, he said, I'm your healer. I'll provide your healing. Not only am I your provider, your Jehovah Jireh, I'm your Jehovah Rapha. I'm your healer. Then Jehovah Nisi, his banner over us is love. We've studied each one of these. These Jehovah Makedesh, our sanctifier. God wants us to be a holy people. 
And he, it's not a ritualistic religious thing. It's something we want to do because we want to enhance our relationship with God and know God better. But there's a devil, and no matter how holy you try to live, you're going to be tempted. Jesus was tempted and tested in all points, just like us. He overcame, showing us that we can overcome. Hallelujah. Then Jehovah Shalom, God our peace. And I love that. He gives the peace of God that passeth all understanding. And, and when there's turmoil life, you do is say, Jehovah Shalom. Hallelujah. And that says it all. Jehovah Shalom. If you can't get all that out, say, Jesus. He's the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. They all point to Jesus. Then Jehovah Rohi, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We look at the 23rd Psalm in detail. Then last week, Pastor Ricky preached on Jehovah Sidkenu, our righteousness. That he who knew no sin was made sin with our sin. So we could be made the very righteousness of God in him. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. You can have a right standing with God. And tonight we've come to Jehovah Shammah, our God is there. Thank God for these redemptive names. And we can know God, and we can know him personally, and we can know him intimately. Amen. My subject tonight, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. Let us pray. Father, thank you that you're with us. Thank you, Lord, that your presence is here, and you have promised to always be with us. And Lord, even when we're all alone somewhere, we're not alone because you're with us. And we praise you for that. We love you, Lord, and you promised to be there. You said, I will be with you. No matter what you're going through, I will be there. And so, Lord, as we open the word of God tonight, speak to us. Speak to hearts. Comfort them, Master, as only you can. Let me preach with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. Everybody said, in Jesus' name, amen. See, the more you know about God the better and the finer Christian you can be. That's what it's all about, is trying to grow in grace and knowledge. The less you know about God, the less of a Christian you will be. Now, that doesn't sound right, but it is. We know God through his word. And the more you know about God through this word, the better and the finer Christian you will be. See, it is our knowledge of God that helps us to know how he functions, and it helps us to know how he works, and it helps us to know who he is. Who will he be when you hit the storms of life? Who will he be when, when you can't pay that bill? Who is he to you then? Is he your Jehovah Jireh, your provider? Who is he when you're sick? Is he the Jehovah Rapha of the Bible that heals you? When you, you feel like your world is in turmoil, do you know him as Jehovah Shalom? He is my peace. But it's important that you know these things because the more you know about these names, the more you understand the character and the characteristics of God and what God will be and who God will be and how God will work in your life just like he worked in the lives of people in the Bible. So the better we know God, the better we understand life. This is a book about how to live your life, how to have a successful career, how to have relationships with other people and get along with them, how to forgive people when they do you wrong, how to know that God is going to take care of you no matter what man does. So it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Amen. So this is an exciting group of lessons on the names of God, and I, I've really enjoyed doing it and sharing part of it with Pastor Rick and, and him sharing with you. The last verse of the last chapter of Ezekiel's prophecy reveals to us this intriguing name of God. Now, I want you to notice what the prophet has to say concerning the name of the new Jerusalem, which God revealed to him in a vision. Look at Ezekiel 48 and 35. He's talking about the new Jerusalem. He said, it was round about 18,000 measures, and the name of that city from that day shall be the Lord is there. Yeah. The Lord is there, Jehovah Shammah. See, if you were to go back and read a chapter or two, you will see that this is relating to the rebuilding of the holy city. It's a prophecy about the new Jerusalem that's coming down. John saw that city coming down. Amen. See, this holy city 
will once again be a beautiful and a wonderful city. So point number one, the Lord will be there in the new Jerusalem. That's what I want you to see. This was a prophecy. The Lord will be there in the new Jerusalem. See, that holy city has not been yet open to us. I believe it's being built on, but that the 12 gates there, they haven't been established and open to us. And when they are the gates, there will be gates of pearls, and there will be walls of jasper and streets of gold. And the Bible says Jehovah will be there. Hallelujah. It's his city. And he will be there. And along with him will be every person who has ever known God. Hallelujah. And it will be the eternal, eternal dwelling place of God's people. It will be the eternal dwelling place of the redeemed people, the covenant people of all ages. So Jehovah Shammah speaks to us of that eternal dwelling place where we shall live forever and ever. And our Lord will be there with us. God said, my name will be there, and I will be there because I am Jehovah Shammah. I am the God that is with you. I'm there. Hallelujah. And I, I remember when I was a little kid, I'd think about forever and ever my knees would ache because I wasn't prepared to, to live forever and ever. I knew if I died, I'd go to hell because I knew about Jesus, and I, I would not live my life for him. I said, I'm going to do it my way. It took me a long time before I decided that I'm going to do it his way because your way is not working, son. Anybody else out there like that, as stubborn as I was? Amen. But God has a way, and he'll send people to you, and, and he'll talk to you. He's a great God. But aren't you glad that God is going to be there in that new Jerusalem, and we shall be there with him? Hallelujah. John said, and we shall see him as he is, but we shall be like him. Paul said, our vile body shall be fashioned. Like unto his glorious body. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells us that that city will have no need of the sun to shine in it in day, by day, nor the moon to shine in it by night. For the glory of God shall lighten that city, and the Lamb shall be the light thereof. Jesus, the light of the world, will be the light that's emanating out and keeping that city so bright, so beautiful, and so wonderful. Hallelujah. Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. But not only does that na name remind us that God will dwell in the new Jerusalem, but the name Jehovah Shammah reminds us that God chooses to have fellowship and to live among men. See, the new Jerusalem that Ezekiel saw, it was a city that was filled with people. God loves people. That's the greatest message of all. God loves you. God cares intimately about you and about me god loves us even in, with all our flaws with all of our mistakes with all of our shortcomings with all of our failures just look up and say jehovah shama say jehovah rohi the lord is my shepherd yeah. jehovah has revealed himself to me in the person of jesus christ and i know him personally and he loves me. And I'm going to love him back. And we're going to have relationship. And we're going to have fellowship. And if I fail, I have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, who shed his blood on the cross. And if I confess my sin, he's faithful and just to forgive me of that sin. And to restore to me righteousness. He'll put me right back in a right standing with God. Hallelujah. See, it takes the blood of Jesus to do that. We were alienated. We needed something to bridge the gap. There was a great gap between God and man. And Jesus, he's the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. He said, greater love have no man than this. But even though I know you're a failure, I know you're going to sin. I know you're going to come short of the mark. But I love you so much. I'm going to give my life to save you. So you can spend eternity with me in a city. Jehovah Shammah, the new Jerusalem. God is there. Hallelujah. Go on, praise him. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, the saints of all ages will be there. and They will worship the Lamb. And he shall rule and reign forever and ever. That doesn't make my legs ache anymore. Because I have him. He is here. 
He is with me. He is with you. And, and we have the peace of Jehovah Shalom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, the Bible teaches that all pain, all suffering, all sorrow, every tear will be wiped, be wiped away. It shall all be abolished in that kingdom. Hallelujah. People will no longer have to struggle to make a living. They will live just to praise God, to praise the Lord Jesus Christ for his wonderful works to the children of men. We'll have crowns. We'll be given rewards. But when we see the lamb, we will take those crowns and we will cast them at his feet and say, Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive glory and honor and power and majesty and might. For he has created all things, and for his pleasure they are and were created. You were created for God's pleasure, and the ultimate of what he has purposed for your life, you will be praising him throughout the endless ages. The, the angels in the glory world, they cry, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory, but that new Jerusalem is going to be full of the glory, and it will be the light of God emanating out of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Jehovah Shama, he will be there. Isn't that wonderful? No more struggle. Sometimes, you know, it's just a struggle to get anything done. I don't know about you, but sometimes, you know, you just seem like you, everything is uphill. But Jehovah Shama's there. Look at uh, Revelation 7, 17, talking about this new Jerusalem. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them. And shall lead them unto living fountains of water. He's the living water himself. Hallelujah. He's going to feed us. He's the bread of life. He's going to feed us. We're going to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Who knows what will be at that banquet. It says that he, in uh, one of the books of the Bible, the Proverbs or Ecclesiastes, said he carried me down to his banquet room. And his banner over me was love. And, and he's got a, a table there spread. On that table, the banquet table of God today, there's salvation. On that banquet table, there's, there's sanctification. Deliverance from the power and the bent of sin. See, we were bent wrong, so God had to straighten us up. And, and then there's the Holy Ghost, the baptism in the Holy Ghost there. There's healing on that table. There's provision on that table. You want to know what's on that table? Then learn these eight compound redemptive names. They're all fulfilled in the person of Jesus. Look at Revelation 21 and 4. Talking about this new Jerusalem. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Look at the people whose hearts are broken. Fragmented lives. People that went to church on Sunday. They will never go back there again. But they're with him. They're with Jehovah Shammah. Because they're Christians. And God has taken care of them. But think about the sorrow and the crying. And the heartache and the heartbreak. We won't, we won't have any of that when we get to heaven. Don't you want to go? I certainly want to make heaven my eternal home. Neither shall there be any more pain. Why? Wow. For the former things have passed away. Jehovah Shammah. God is there. Hallelujah. See, if you will read the book of Daniel and the book of Ezekiel and the book of Revelation, you can see the ultimate plan of God. And the Lord will be there in his kingdom, and we shall be there with him. I love that old song. Heaven, happy home above. Heaven, land of peace and love. Oh, it makes me feel like traveling on. Heaven, eternal. Heaven, supernal. Well, I'm so glad that it's real. Since childhood, I heard of a heaven. I wondered if it could be true. If there could be mansions eternal. Up there, somewhere. Beyond the blue, I wonder, do people really go there? Then one day, sweet Jesus came in. Yeah. 
and I caught a vision of heaven. My soul with all heaven did blend. Heaven, happy home above. Heaven, land of peace and love. Jehovah Shammah, my Savior's going to be there. Your Savior's going to be there. We shall behold him. And, and we will have bodies that have no mark, no scars, nothing imperfect. And when we see him, we'll see where his, that crown of thorns was jammed down on his head. We'll see nail prints in his hands and in his feet and a, a gaping hole in his side. And we'll recognize him and say, there he is. That's the one that gave his life for me. Hallelujah. And we'll worship him forever and ever and ever. He took all of that so you and I could have heaven and know him. Hallelujah. Not only is the Lord there in the New Jerusalem, but more important for our lives today, the Lord Jehovah Sh Shammah reminds us that the Lord is already living among his people. Point number two, he is the Lord who is there in the new birth. Aren't you glad to be saved tonight? He is the Lord who was there in the new birth. And all you have to do is look inside your own heart and say, Jehovah Shammah. <laughs> the Lord is there. Amen. Amen. He is the Lord that is there in the new birth. The Lord is here now. He has already set up his throne in our heart. What Ezekiel saw was a prophecy of what was to come. He was on an old covenant. And he saw the new Jerusalem, but God is going to be there. But he says, I'm going to be in you. Hallelujah. And Jesus Christ came to this earth to give us the new birth. And he is in us now, and he has set up his throne in our hearts because we have surrendered our lives to him. Jehovah Shammah. Hallelujah. See, the Lord enters your heart the very moment you're born again. Now, how many can remember? Let me see your hand. How many of you can remember when you were born again? Everybody in here say, I can remember when I was born again. Amen. I heard one man say that I don't know when I was born again. I just figured out I was. Well, I wouldn't want to live like that. Praise God. I, 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 I know when I was born again. And you know when you were born. See, if you were to walk down memory lane tonight, could you say, this is the place where I got born. This is where it happened to me. This is where I passed from life. From death unto life, and I was born again of God's Spirit. This is where I became a Christian. I know the time, I know the moment, and I know I was saved. You may have fallen, you may have stumbled, you may have made a thousand mistakes, but if you've ever been born again, the Bible says, if you confess your sin, don't live in sin, run to God. If you confess your sin, it's faithful and just to forgive you of that sin and put you right back with the right standing with God. God's plan is that none perish. But you have to repent. And that means that, you know, you're going this way like in the Marine Corps and all of a sudden, about face. And then you're going back this way. I turned on the wrong leg, brother. You know, I did it good. <laughs> <laughs> Some things you just learned. Hallelujah. I knew he was looking at me. Tell me sometimes when I got my necktie, I said, your military alignment's out, Pastor. I appreciate him keeping me straight there, though, because he knows that I was in the core like him, and I want it right. And that's just the way they train you. Amen. But I tell you one thing. If you've ever been born again, that was a time and that was a place because Jesus said that which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. You must be born again. And what a wonderful thing it is to be born again. And... Uh, Put it on the marquee one time. Said, if you don't like how you were born the first time, try being born again. Hallelujah. I promise you, you'll like that. You'll like what Jesus does for you. But what a wonderful thing it is. And so, if you didn't get enough, go back to Calvary. That's all you have to do is just keep going back to the cross and get some more. See, when a person gets saved, some drastic, dramatic changes should take place in their heart. Those old sinful habits, we lose the desire for those things. Those old sinful ways, all of a sudden we don't desire and we don't want to do those things. We want to please God. 
Now, you're going to be tempted, so you have to say no to temptation. But it is not your nature, once you are born again, to enjoy sin. Matter of fact, once you get saved, if you sin, you're going to feel condemnation. Your heart will condemn you. Say, oh, God, I got this problem. I wish I could get rid of it. That proves right there that you're saved. That proves that even if you fail, you're still saved. If you've got remorse and you, you have a repentant heart and you say, God, forgive me, he'll keep on forgiving you. He's a long-suffering God. And ultimately, if you'll just keep coming back, guess what? You'll get the victory. Anybody out there took you a little while to get the victory? Let me see your hand. Took me a long time to get some victory in some of the areas of my life. It didn't, you know, I got saved good, but I had some things I had to deal with. But I just kept going back. Hallelujah. So today, thousands of Christians are satisfied not to go on in God. I guess they're half saved. I don't know how you get half saved. But they cling to their old habits and They just don't want to get free of them. Because if you want to get, I can tell you this much. The only thing that holds you in sin is your love of that sin. Because I had something in my life I thought I could never give up. When I learned to hate that thing because of what it was doing to me, I walked away from it free. Never been back. I have no desire to go back. And, you know, we get saved and we... If we're not careful, we, we fail to realize that there are people that are struggling. I think we ought to be real about this thing, that there are people that are struggling. And, and you know, we're not to here to condemn anybody. We're just here to point you to Jehovah Shammah, <laughs> to the blood of Jesus that cleanses from all sin so you can get free to, to live the life of liberty that, that Jesus brings. But too many people, they cling to their old habits and they make excuses for them. Too many people make excuses for not witnessing. They excuse themselves for not tithing. They make excuses for not attending church services on a regular basis. They confess Jesus with their lips. But you don't see any real change in their lives. There's no real hunger and thirst for righteousness in their hearts. They've stopped halfway. And because of that, they never know the true joy of salvation. Our churches in America are full of people like that. But it's, it's a joy to serve God. They confess Jesus with their lips. He said, your heart is far from me. That should be a passion, a desire to want more of the Lord. See, when people get saved, there should be some tremendous changes that take place. Uh, there's a song we sing, the things I used to do, I don't do no more since the Lord laid his hands on me. The place I used to go, I don't go no more since the Lord laid his hands on me. Has been a change in his life of mine. Can I get a witness? Since the Lord laid his hands on me, has been a change in this life of mine. Since the Lord laid his hands on me. On me. Aren't you glad you can feel him? Aren't you glad you can sense him? Jehovah Shammah. He is with you. He is in you. Go and praise him. Hallelujah. See, today, I, I, wherever I go, I see the, that God, the Holy Ghost, is working in many denominations. I see him in many congregations. I see him working in many churches today. I see God moving in many places, places that I visit. But it's a sad thing that the majority of of professing Christians, they have never fully surrendered their lives to the Lord's control. It was easy for me to make that full surrender once I got there because I said, God, it hadn't worked out the way I'm doing it. And I believe what you got planned for me is a whole lot better than what I've planned for me. And you know, I found out it has been. And I tell you, God knows what he's doing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at 2 Corinthians 5, 17. This may help you. If, you. if you're struggling with something, memorize this verse. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And then it goes on to say, and all things of God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ Jesus. 
Not only did he reconcile us, he's made us ambassadors. God says, I'm going to come live in you, Jehovah Shammah, and then I'm going to send you out to do my work for me. He said, everybody's not going to come to church, so I'll have to have a Teresa. I'll have to have a Kathy, and you've got influence that the preacher won't have. Some people say, I'm not going to go to that church where that man is. I don't like him anyway. But they might like you. And they may come and hear me preach. And the God, the Holy Ghost inside of me, they might get saved. And then they might just change their mind and say, I like that man. He's my pastor now. <laughs> Hallelujah. But God is a great God. But if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. See, a born-again person is someone who has been changed. And the old things are gone, and new things have come. So if a person is willing to present their body as a living sacrifice on the altar of full commitment to the Lord, he will fill their lives with himself, Jehovah Shammah. Hallelujah. And when a person is full of Jesus, people will see the Spirit of Christ in them. They'll see the light of his glory, Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. Hallelujah. You're the light of the world. Jesus said, so let your light shine before men. Jehovah Shammah, he's in you. You have tremendous influence. So not only is he the Lord who will be there in the new Jerusalem, not only is he the Lord who is there in the new birth, but look at this third point. He is Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who is there in the time of trouble. Yeah. Everybody has troubles. Man that is born of woman is few of days full of trouble. But it's wonderful to have someone to turn to in the time of trouble. It's wonderful to have a friend to turn to no matter what happens. You know, it's, it's a wonderful thing to have friends. The body of Christ, the way God designed it, it's wonderful that we have friends. And, and I have people tell me, you mean more to me than my own blood family. My church family means more to me. Yeah. And there's a reason for that. It's because there's a spiritual birth that's taken place. And it's much more powerful than the natural birth. Jehovah Shammah. God is there. God comes to dwell in us. And he's there with us in our times of trouble. See, your earthly friends will sometimes forsake you. Sometimes they will leave you. Sometimes they'll break your heart. But Jesus is a friend who is there in the time of trouble. And he has promised, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. In the Great Commission, where he said, go into all the world, he says, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. That's long enough and that's far enough. He is Jehovah Shammah. And he is the God that will be there and be with us. In the, the, the vision that Ezekiel saw, he says, the new Jerusalem, he'll be there, Jehovah Shammah. In that beautiful city, hallelujah. But he's with us now in the new birth. He's with us now when we're facing the storms of life. And he is the Lord who is with us. Listen to these words of the psalmist. I love this. Psalm 46 and 1. Talking about trouble. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear. Why not? Jehovah Shammah. He's with me. Though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried away into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. What a promise. Glory to God. Your whole world may be turned upside down. The whole, everybody may forsake you, but the Lord, Jehovah Shammah, he is there. Hallelujah. See, it's important that you know these names because we all face those times. We all face those moments when, when we feel forsaken by our friend. I, I'll, I'll never forget one of the, the greatest heartaches that, heartbreaks that I had <laughs> after I got saved was a friend of mine that I had led him to the Lord, laid hands on him when God sanctified him, laid hands on him when he was filled with the Holy Ghost, gave him my sermons to preach, got him places to preach. And then he turned on me. I had a pity party. I really shed some tears on that thing. And the Lord spoke to me. I said, God, this is hard. And God said, you want the, my power? 
but I do, Lord. He said, then, if you're going to know me in the power of the resurrection, you'll have to know me in the fellowship of my suffering. And sometimes, just to be a Christian, you're going to suffer some things. And what God is doing, he's got you on the wheel that I preached on Sunday. <laughs> and he's working on you. And he's building some things inside of you. He's strengthening you. See, he's getting you ready for something greater. Something that when, if you know, David didn't kill the giant to start with. He killed a lion. Then he killed a bear. Then he killed that giant. It was the anointing, but that anointing was getting progressively stronger. And he became uh, the king, and no one could stand against David. God gave him some 600 mighty men then. And so David was God's champion. You want to be God's champion? Jehovah Shammah. Hallelujah. Look at this, Nahum 1 and 7. I used to have a pastor that quoted this all the time. He's in heaven. Nahum said, the Lord is good. A stronghold in a day of trouble. He knoweth them that trust in him. See, I've had some wonderful friends. My wife is really my best friend. I've had some, some great friends in life, but they, I, don't, I don't think I could count them all on my hand. You know, they just, they just don't come to stay. Some people come for a reason, and some people come for a season. But most of them come for a season. <laughs> Amen. But uh, there's a friend, the Bible says, that's sick it closer than a brother. Look at Proverbs 18, 24. A man that had friends must show himself friendly. There's a friend that stick it closer than a brother. His name is Jesus. Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there in the time of trouble. Now, some people say, I don't have any friends. Well, show yourself friendly. Be a friend. Whatever you sow, you reap. That's a law. It's a law of the harvest. And it works no matter what commodity you're dealing with. Tomatoes, sow a tomato, it'll always be a tomato. You sow an apple, it'll always be an apple. If you sow love, you're going to get love. Sow kindness, kindness is coming back. And whatever you sow, there's a law of the harvest. God never gets mixed up with what's in a seed. And then when I mention money, most people, their thoughts go out the window and say, I knew he'd get around to that. <laughs> and, and that's the devil talking. Because the devil doesn't want you to understand seed time harvest. And, and when that man called me that had that tremendous need, he had a tremendous need. I'll tell you, for where he was, he had something that was far greater need than what you're facing. But he had a friend. And he called me. He wanted me to loan it. I said, No. The Bible says not to be surety for another's debt. I'm going to help you. I'm going to send you something that will keep you out of the pitfalls of life when I get around to it. I said, I'll give it to you. I'll just give it. The Bible says if you have it to give, don't shut up your bowels of compassion. Give it. It's like the lady whose car broke down. Goes to the mechanic. He said, can you fix my car? Yes, I can fix it. Be $500. Praise God. Glory to God. Go and fix my car. Lady, you're a strange one. Well, can you fix my car? Yes, I can fix it, but it'd be $500. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Go and fix my car. Lady, did you hear what I said? It's going to cost $500 to fix your problem. She said, can you fix my car? He said, yes, I can fix it. She said, I don't have a problem. I got $500, and you can fix it. Go on and fix it. Hallelujah. Most of us, we just don't want to let go of what God has blessed us with to bless somebody else. Go and praise God. That's free. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Jehovah Shammah. See, you may have friends that you think will come to your aid when you're in trouble. But you may discover that they won't. They're just a fair weather friend. They like you as long as you're prospering. They like you as long as everything is going well. But when you get in trouble... Sometimes those friends, they just disappear. But Jesus never does that. He sticks closer than a brother. Even when your other friends abandon you, Jehovah Shammah's there. Even when your family abandons you, he is there. And they will sometimes, at some time. 
Not only is he the Lord who is there in trouble. Point number four. He is there in the time of loneliness. Have you ever been lonely? I mean really lonely. Have you ever been to where you just felt like nobody cares? I can't figure this thing out. I remember when I returned from Vietnam. I could be in a crowd of a thousand people. Yet I felt all alone. I wasn't born again. And there was an emptiness inside of me. And I knew something was missing. But you know. There's a little shame in everybody's heart. That God has just for himself. And Jesus is the only one. That can satisfy that longing in your heart. Look at Isaiah 50. Verse 7. See. God is there in the time of loneliness. Look at this. For the Lord God will help me. Therefore, I shall not be confounded. He is near that justifies me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Look at Psalms 119, 151. Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are true. So you may feel lonely, but he's near. Isaiah 55 and 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Hallelujah. Can there be any doubt? That the Lord is near. The Bible says it's Christ in you. The hope of glory. See he's closer to you than any human person. Could ever be. Even in loneliness. He is there. He made you. He cares for you. And he wants to help you. And the songwriter said he's just as close. As the mention of his name. He is Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. Look at John 17 23. See this is what. Jesus in the new birth was getting to, so you would know that he is with you at all times. John 17, 23, I and thou and thou and me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the Lord may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me. Look at this. Listen, put uh, Colossians 1, 27 up there. It was a mystery. It's a mystery. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The Bible says that the princes of this world, the devils, if they had known that, they would not have crucified the Lord. When he died on that old rugged cross, shed his precious blood to redeem us, he came out of that grave, he took his blood, and he went into heaven itself, put it on the mercy seat. God accepted the blood, the claims of justice for your sin, my sin, the sin of the whole world. They've been satisfied. Then God sent the Holy Ghost into that little upper room. Earlier, Jesus had told his disciples, said, the Spirit is with you, but he shall be in you. And it takes the blood of Jesus to wash you from sin, it takes the power of the Holy Ghost to apply the blood to your heart and for you to be born again. And if the devil had known the mystery God had had hidden for ages, Christ in you, the hope of glory, he would not have crucified the Lord. And out of that little upper room, when the Spirit was poured out, there came 120 disciples. They looked like Jesus talk like Jesus, do the miracles of Jesus, and down through the ages, there's been a church. Hallelujah. The mystery that God had hidden for ages, Jehovah Shammah, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Listen to this by song by William Kilpatrick. He put it beautifully when he penned these lines. Jesus, my Savior, is all thanks to me. Oh, what a wonderful Savior, see? Guiding, protecting, or life's rolling sea. Mighty deliverer. Jesus for me. Jesus in sickness. Jesus in health. Jesus in poverty. Comfort or wealth. Sunshine or tempest. Wherever may be. He is my safety. Jesus for me. Jesus in sorrow. In pain. And in joy. Jesus my treasure. In loss or in gain. Constant companion. Wherever I may be. Living or dying, Jesus for me. Jehovah Shammah. We get to know God through 
his names. I was working on a funeral recently, and I just happened to run across this. It's a copy I made. I did this December the 29th, 1982. I was saved September 26th, 1982. And in an all-night prayer, God asked me a question, and I wrote it down. Who is this man called Jesus? All eight of those compound redemptive names. Put that chart back up there, please, on those compound redemptive names. Every one of those compound redemptive names, they all point to the cross and what Jesus would be. Pastor Rick, if you'd come to the piano. And that night that God asked me this question, I wrote down, I ended up with 105 names for Jesus. And from that moment to this, that's why these names have been so important to me, to know him. King of kings, Lord of lords, Messiah, son of David, son of man, son of God, wonder worker, tireless servant, soul winner, the divine teacher, the bread of life, the water of life, the redeemer, personal savior, the great physician, the good shepherd, the prince of life, the altogether lovely one, the light of the world, the way, the truth, the life, the image of God. And it just kept on going until I finished this list of names. And when I finished it, God spoke to me, and he said, Jesus will be all of that to you and much, much more if you will only let him be. And I went to church that following Wednesday. I had this little list on me, and a lady asked me, the preacher stood up, and she said, I've been praying and I've been fasting all day. I don't have a sermon. And she looked at me. She said, do you have a sermon, Brother Nelson? I said, yes, I do. And all I had was this list right here. And I got up and preached, who's this man called Jesus? Give me an E flat, brother. Out of this list right here came about 10 songs sermons but it started a quest for me because my father asked me a question he said who is Jesus who's this man called Jesus what manner of man is he he's the one who can calm your trouble Cause blind eyes to open, he turned the water into wine. He's the Savior, the Redeemer, the way for mankind. Well, he's a strong, a mighty tower, he's our refuge. He's the lily of Bethany Valley. He's both the buyer and the bride. He's the captain of salvation, the risen bride. His name is Jesus, Jesus. He's the giver of life. hope for tomorrow he's the answer for today he's precious he's love he's the truth and he's the way and he will do for you what no other can his name the Savior of men. Yes, he's a strong, a mighty tower. He's our refuge in life. 
He's the lily of every valley. He's both the buyer and the bride. He's the captain of salvation. The risen Christ. His name is Jesus. Jesus. He's the giver of life. Let us stand. I'm going to sing that, and I want you to just worship the Lord. If you don't know him, you don't know Jehovah Shammah. You don't know Jesus as your personal Savior. I want you to come down. And I want to introduce you to the greatest friend you could ever have. He's a friend that's thick and closer than a brother. He loves you, and he gave himself for you. Won't you give yourself to him and live for him? Who's this man called Jesus? What manner of man is he? He's the one who can calm your troubled sea. He calls blind eyes to open. He turned the water into wine. He's the Savior, the Redeemer, the way forth and time. Well, he's a strong, a mighty tower. He's our refuge in life. He's the lily of the valley. He's both the buyer and the prize. He's the captain of salvation. The risen Christ. His name is Jesus. Jesus, he's the giver of life. Father, I just love you and praise you, and I thank you, Lord, that we can know you. That, Lord, that we'll know you in that new Jerusalem, that city you've gone to prepare. But, Lord, we can know you now. We can know you personally, intimately. We can know you in the times of trouble. We can know you, Lord, in the times of loneliness. We can lo know you, Lord, no matter what we're going through, because you have promised, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, as we leave here tonight, Lord, that some may be leaving Lord, without a friend tonight, they may have traveled alone coming here. They will not leave alone, God, because your presence will go with them. Lord, help us to realize that you are there, you're with us, you're for us, and that you love us. Lord, help us to live our lives in such a way that we please you and we worship you. Look at three people and tell them, you are blessed and highly favored of God. You're blessed, 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 and highly.